Hello everyone and good day. So, moving on to the next chapter of route inspection. Thank you Dr Frost and Andrew Blackett for this PowerPoint. Okay, so as you know, we've now done algorithms. Oh, tick. Graphs and networks, tick. Algorithms on graph, tick. We're now going to look at route inspection, which is really simple and really fun. So, what we're going to look at quickly, though, is the seven bridges of Kongsberg, I'm going to say. Okay, so, this was actually a problem that somebody solved, and they... The first solution was published by Leonard Euler, okay, in 1736, and it is considered to be the first problem on graph theory, this type of mathematics we call graph theory decision. So, can a resident of the city take a walk around the city, okay, finishing where they start and crossing all seven bridges over the river. Okay, so this is what you're gonna try and have a go. Off you go, have a go. Okay, so step one is representing this problem using arcs and vertices. Okay, if we say each town, well, not town, but maybe landmass is a vertice, and then each um, arc can be a bridge. Okay, so we've got four land masses. One, oh wait, that one, two, three, four. Yeah. Now connect them and see where you go. Okay, so then we will start connecting them. So if we think, you know, if this was our A is here. B is in the middle, C is here, D is here. From B to A, there's two bridges. Okay, from B to C, there's one. But you can also get from A to C on one bridge. C to D, there's one bridge. Yeah. And from D to B. Okay, so it's going to look something like this. Now, what you will find is this problem can't be solved. There is no way for you to start in one place, visit everywhere, and then come back to that place. Okay, and the reason being is because each vertex is odd. Okay, we'll come back and see if we are able to solve this a little bit later and how. So we have two types of graphs that we'd like to look at. It's Eulerian or semi-Eulerian. So you can decide which ones can you draw without taking your pen off the paper. You've got five to do. And I'm going to give you two minutes. Which ones can you draw without taking your pen off the paper? Off you go. Okay, so we should have found that we can actually draw graphs four and five. So, for example, I'll show you. For graph four, let's say I start here. I can go one, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, all the way back. Okay, I've done that. Perfect. I can do the same with five. One, two, three, four. Oh, no. I don't want to go back that way. Wait, let's start again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Okay, so I did that. Perfect. Okay, graph 2 and 3. We can do it, but only I can't start and finish at the same place. If I start here, 
And I go across. What do I find? I finish here, okay? Same with this one. If I start here, and I'm trying to get through every arc, I finish here, okay? And then, for question one, I don't think I can do it at all. I'll give it a go. No, there's always going to be one arc missing. Okay, so this brings us to our key terms. Eulerian, okay. Our graphs four and five. Semi Eulerian, our graphs two and three. Now I've told you which graphs they are, but I need a definition for them, okay? Why? What makes it Eulerian and semi Eulerian? Okay, perfect. So Eulerian is a connected graph. is a connected graph where all of our vertices are even, okay? You know, we have, so there's no odd vertices. Each one has an even order, you know, that has order four. Eulerian is a connected graph where every vertice, vertices, no, where every node has an even order. Okay, and then semi Eulerian is the same, but it also has a bar, it only has exactly two odd vertices. So semi Eulerian is a connected graph with exactly two odd vertices or a pair of odd vertices, okay? So, we have another challenge for you. Can you find an Eulerian trail around the following pattern crossing every line segment exactly once, okay? For example, what I mean is, like we could start here, you have to cross every line segment. Does that make sense? Okay, each line segment, as you can see, these are all line segments. Okay, off you go. Okay, you know how to go. Now remember, whenever you have a problem like this, you should really try and turn it into a graph as well. So once you do this, turn it into a graph and look at the even or odd vertices. Okay, once you do this, you should find that actually you will have an odd number. You're going to have more than two odd vertices, so it's going to be impossible to do this, okay? But um, you can have a look at the YouTube link and have a look at it. It is quite fun. Okay, so now what I would like you to do is to draw each of the com completed graphs. So, for example, K2, two nodes, and each node is connected to each other. We can see that each one has an order of one. There's exactly two odd vertices, so this one is semi Eulerian. Okay, K3 has three nodes. Each one is connected, and we can see that each vertice has an order of two. All of them are even, so this is Eulerian. Can you do the same for K4, K5, and K6, please? And then have a look at K1 and also K lots of 2n plus 1. What does that mean? What does this mean? Is this Eulerian or semi Eulerian? Off you go. Okay, so here are the answers. We can see for K4, when we look at the order, we've got all of these are odd vertices. Okay. So it's not Eulerian or semi-Eulerian at all. K5, they're all even, so it is Eulerian. K6, again, they're all odd, so it is 
not Eulerian. So actually what we find with the completed graphs is only the completed graphs of odd vertices are Eulerian and that's why we have k of 2n plus 1 because 2n plus 1 we know represents an odd number. Okay, so for any graph, any complete graph with an odd number of vertices, it will always be Eulerian. If it has an even number of vertices, it will not be Eulerian. Okay. Another part of the chapter done. Please, can you do some questions? Okay, here we go. Next algorithm that we're going to learn is the root inspection algorithm. Now, root inspection, think of Postman Pat, okay? Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat, and his black and white cat. Yeah? Matt, you remember that? Okay, now Postman Pat, it's called the root inspection algorithm because we have to go along every route. You know, imagine a postman, okay? Anyone else know a song? Hey, hey, wait a minute, Mr. Postman. Ooh, Mr. Postman. <laughs> no? It's a great song. Anyway, imagine a postman though, right? So you're a postman, and what do you have to do? You have to go along every street, don't you? It's not just about visiting the main towns. It's about going on every street. Some people live in the middle of nowhere. And you have to deliver all the parcels. So with route inspection, what we want to do is we want to cover all the routes, okay, and then get back to where we started. Because if we start off at the main post office place, I want to then do it in the quickest. I know I've got to go along every route, I get that, but what's the quickest way of doing it? That's what we're going to look at. Here is a typical type of question. Postman Pat to deliver letters to all the houses in Greendale. Where have I heard of Greendale from? Oh, I'm thinking Riverdale. Okay, the length of time in minutes it takes him to deliver each street is shown on the graph. Calculate the time taken for Pat to complete his round. You may assume he starts and finishes at the depot. Okay, now first things first. I know I have to cover every route, don't I? I know that. Can I do it without taking my pen off the paper? That would mean it's Eulerian. If it's Eulerian, well, then we need to find out exactly how many, the order of each node. So step one, write down the order of each node. Four. One, two, three. Four. One, two, three, four. Four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Two. Okay, step one. I've written down the order of each node. What does that mean, that all of these are even? This means the graph is Eulerian. Okay, so the graph is Eulerian. Okay, if the graph is Eulerian, that means the total length he's going to travel, I need to add all these up together, don't I? And then I need to do a root. So, are we ready? Here we go. So, we start at the depot. We go here. So what do I have? 2. Okay, plus 8. 10. Plus 7. 17. Plus 6. 23. Plus 11. 34. Plus 10. 44. Plus 12. 56. Plus 8, 64. Plus 12, 76. Plus 9, 85. Plus 3, 88. Plus 9, 107. Plus 4, 111. Plus three, 114. Okay, when I add them up, equals 114. Right, so that was nice and easy. Now, let's just check. Um, oh, apparently it's 104. How did I get 10 out? Right, someone add these up for me using a calculator. 
Okay, it's 104. I have no idea what happened with my mental maths. I think sort of singing went to my head. Okay, just double check on your calculator. And then, normally though, okay, each one, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Normally each node would be associated with a letter. Okay, and then this is what we would do. So I'm going to use green. So if we start at A, so A, B, D, C, um, B, E, C, G, D, all the way back to F, G, E, F, B, A. Sometimes you will have to write the root that you did. Okay, you can't just colour it in because you could, anyone can sit there and colour it in. Okay, so this one was easy because all of our vertices had an even amount of arcs. Okay, we had an even order. So let's have a look at what happens when we don't have that. Here we go. So, step one, we write down the order of each vertice. Okay? So, we know this is two, one, two, three, four, five, six. Wait, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Two, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, you can clearly see we have two odd nodes. Now that's okay. Okay, we have C and G. Highlighting your odd nodes is step one. Step one, highlight your odd nodes. Okay, then how could we make these odd nodes even? Okay, because we know we still need to start and finish at A, but for C and G, that's not going to happen. What is the shortest route between C and G? Does anybody know? What is the shortest route between C and G? Okay, if I look, pardon? C to A is 3, A to G is 1. So that's a total of four. Can anyone see a shorter route? CBAG is three. Perfect. So what we would then do is we would add these in. We would find the shortest possible route from C and G. So C to B. B to A, B to G, 1, 1, 1. And we add them in because we are going to have to repeat them essentially, aren't we? To get back to our starter point. We need to repeat these so we find the shortest between our two odd vertices so that we can repeat them. So the shortest route from C to G is free and we put them in so that we can repeat them. What you will now find is the order of C and G will now turn to even numbers. And even though B was 2, it's now 4, because we're going in and in and out of it. That doesn't change. Everything is now even. So now it says calculate the time taken. So the, the time taken will be all of the weights added together, okay, plus the 3 that we've just added on. Now, when I add these all up in a calculator, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just use a little highlighter and cross them off as I put them in, because this is where we make mistakes on these types of questions. Not because we can't add like miss sometimes, but because there is a lot going on. But the answer will be 60. It then says describe a possible route. Okay, if we were to describe a possible route, this is where this part comes in. 
Now, I'm not a fan of this part, but we know he has to start at A and finish at A, so we know it's A. Okay, so my A, I'm going to E. Okay, and I use my highlighter, C, and I'm just gonna go around F, and there is no particular order to this, D, C, B, back to C, A, G, E, F, G, H, F, back to G, back to A, B, and then back to A. So as you can see, the most effective way to do this is to highlight and write it at the same time so you know where you're going. Because, you know, some people, they just go round, right, yeah, have I done a route? Brilliant. And they're like, oh, where did I even go? And then sometimes you'll find, like, when I came back to A in the middle somewhere, if I'd have carried on going back to A, I would have then closed myself off. I know I need two. So you just keep finding different routes. So this is a possible route. It's very difficult to mark these questions, as you can imagine. So then um, this is a possible route done. Part C, what would be the length of the route if he could start at G and finish at C? Well, before we added in our extra um, routes, because they're going to double back on them, if we were to start at G and finish at C, because they are a pair of odd vertices, well, actually, the root would just be the total weight of the graph. Because it's semi eulerian there is a way, if we start at the one odd, to finish at the other odd. So that would have a total weight of 7, 57. Okay, because semi eulerian So... To find the shortest path between the odd vertices, you can just use common sense or you can use um, Dijkstra's algorithm, okay? Because it's only between two vertices. Okay, here we go. Test your understanding. As you can see, it's giving you the total weight, which is really nice. It normally does an exam, okay? And give it a go. Okay, the network shown represents the walking time between a network of lookouts in a forest. The edges represent the possible paths between them. Using the route inspection algorithm, determine the length of the shortest route which traverses all of the paths, which starts and finishes at the same vertex. Okay, so first of all, step one, write down the order of each node. Four, four, one, two, three, four, five, six. Six, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, perfect. So we've written down the order of each node. Now we have one pair of odd vertices, so that means it's semi eulerian So we can start and finish, start at E and finish at F, or finish at F and start at uh, start at F and finish at E. Okay, but it says we need to finish and start at the same vertex, so we need to make this even. So we need to find the shortest route from E to F. Okay, so if I look at E to F, the shortest route, I can go E, B, A, C, and then down to F. But that's also 10. E to F is 10. If I think 4, 11, it's more, you know, 5, 14, it is going to be 10. So I need to add in another arc because we're going to repeat this one, we now have another arc worth 10, okay, with a weight of 10. So that means the total weight, the length of the shortest route for part I is going to be 103 plus 10, which is 113. This is the length of the shortest route. So. Yeah, perfect. So 10 is the shortest. Then, um, we need to, it doesn't say determine the route, so we don't actually have to 
go and do it. It doesn't say that. Okay, part II. The re-inspector can arrange to be picked up from a point other than the starting point. Where would you advise he starts and finishes his inspection to order, in order to minimise the time? Well, it would be the two odd notes, so E and F, yeah? E and F. And then it says a new root of length 7 is added between E and F. Explain the effect this will have on the inspection time. So if there's a new route, and this is now 7, well, what happens? It means that it's now all even, yeah? So there's two things that happen. First of all, the graph is now Eulerian. So the graph is now Eulerian, okay, and the total... Um, length is going to be 111. Okay, 103 plus 7 is 110. I'll tell you what, that was not quick for math, was it? Okay, so it is 110. So, make sure you understand what's going on and why. That was quite a very simple um, question. Okay, lastly... This is more the type of question you're going to get. You're going to get four odd vertices, and then I'm going to show you what to do. Step one. What is step one? Write down the order of each node. So, how many arcs come from B? Four. How many arcs from D? Three. C? One, two, one, two, three, four, five. E? One, two, three, four. G, 3, F, 1, 2, 3, 4, A, 1, 2, 3. Okay, so my odd vertices are D, A, C, G. Okay, now if I was to look at these pairs, I could have A, C, D, G, couldn't I? I could have A, D, C, G, or I could have A, G, C, D. Those are the only possible combinations I could have. I need to write down each combination. So we're going to have a look at each one. So let's have a look at A, C, and D, G. I need to find the shortest route between A and C. Between A and C, I've got 3 plus 7, which is 10. I've got 5 plus 5, which is 10. Or I've got 3, 1, and 5, which is 3, 1, 5, 9. Okay, so AC, I can do that by doing A. So A. E, B, C, and that has a total of 9, doesn't it? And then D, G, I can go 9, or 7 plus 4 is 11, or 7 plus 2 is 9 plus 5, okay, 11, uh, 9 is the smallest. It's just direct then, isn't it? 11. Okay, I'm now going to look at my next pairings. A, D, how do I get from A to D? A to D, I have A, B, D is 8, or A, E, B, D is 7. I think 7 is the smallest I'm going to get, isn't it? So A, E, B, D, which is 7. C to G is quite easy. I think it's just 4, because 7, 9, 2, 5, so 4 is the smallest. Okay. Then lastly, I have A, G, C, D. Okay, A to G. Um, okay, so we could go 3, 1, which is 4, plus 3. 3 plus 1 is 4. 4 plus 3 is 7. Plus 9 is 16. What else do we have? 3 plus 7 plus 4 is 14. 
I think that's going to be the quickest. A, E, C, G, which is 14. A, E, C, G, which is 14. And then C, D is 7. And we didn't, it's literally just C, D. Okay, so sometimes it'll ask you to do Dijkstra's to find the lowest one, okay? Or you can just do what I do, you know, I'm having a look using all my knowledge. Now, what is the minimum weight? So for each one, this one then becomes 20, this one's 11, and this one's 21. So what we're going to do is we're going to, the, the shortest is 11, isn't it? That's, so this is going to be the pairing I'm going to choose. Okay, 11. So we need to add an extra arc in AE, and that's a weight of 3, EB, no, that's a weight of 1, BD, that's a weight of 3, and then also CG with a weight of 4. So now we've added our extra arcs. It will then, uh, it needs the total weight. So we know the total weight is going to be, the shortest path is going to be 72 plus 11, which is 83. Now, we haven't had to, um, we haven't had to actually go around and draw anything on this one. We literally have just had to state the minimum root. Right, here's a typical exam question. It's 11 marks. Okay, 11 marks, 11 minutes. Okay, so now I'm going to go through the answer. So, the diagram shows a network of roads connecting six villages. The number on each edge is the length in miles of the road. A police patrol car based at village A has to travel along each road at least once before returning to A. Find the length of an optimal Chinese postman route for the police patrol car. Okay, so FYI, Chinese postman is also known as route inspection. It got changed to route inspection um, because they just thought it was really random that you had a Chinese postman. Okay, but it used to be called the Chinese postman problem. Now it's called route inspection. Okay, so sometimes when you're on YouTube Googling, if you looked for route inspection, if you type a Chinese postman, you'll get the same, problem, the same algorithm, okay? So, step one, what are we going to do? We are going to write down the order of each node. So A is three, F, three, B, four, E, four, C, three, D, three. I'm now going to write down all the possible different pairings. We have A, F, C, D. We can have A, C, D, F. And we could have A, D, and C, F. You have to write down all the pairings. This is how you're going to enable you to get all of the marks, okay? Um, and then we want to find the shortest pair. So, A, F. How do I get from A to F? 12 or 20 or 9, 12, 11. I think 12 is the smallest and that is just A, F. C, D. 30, 30, or 9, 12, 11, which is 32, 9, 20, 11. Okay, so I think 30 is the smallest, and that is just CD. So that is a total of 42. Okay, next we have AC. To get from A to C, I think 18 is the smallest, and it is A, B, C. And that's 18. D to F is 22. And that's F E D, isn't it? Or D E F. D E F, and that's 22. 22 plus 18 is a total of 40. Then we have A D. Um, I'm going to say 9, 12, 11. It's going to be the shortest route. 
um, 32. A, B, E, D, 32. And then to get from C to F is also 9, 12, 11, which is 32. And that's C, B, E, F. So that gives me a total of 64. So that means my smallest pair is AC and DF, okay? So now I would essentially add extra arcs because AC is going through B. Oh, no, I'm going to do them in black, sorry. So I'm going to have nine. Nine. This will now make them even as well, okay? And then it's 11, 11. 11, 11. Okay, part A just says find the length. Okay, so we know the total length is 164 plus 40, because those are the extra arcs we've had to give. It's 204 is now the total length. Miles, 204 miles. It tells us in the question the length in miles, okay? Part B, a council worker starts from A and travels along each road at least once before finishing at C. Starts A and finishes at C. Find the length of an optimal route for the council worker. Well, if they're starting at A and finishing at C, okay, we, if you think about, I'm just going to delete this. We only want, if we start at A and finish at C, we want both of them to be odd. We want it to be semi Eulerian. Okay? So, if I keep in the FE and the ED, so, you know, using what I know, that must mean for part B, we're going to have the total weight of the graph, which is 164. If I want to start at A and finish at C, I just need to add 22 which is going to be 186 miles. Okay, and then part C. Politician is to travel along all the roads at least once. He can start his journey at any village and finish his journey at any village. Find the length of the optimal route for the politician. State the vertices from which Find the length of an optimal route for the politician. State the vertices from which the politician could start. Oh, right, so he can start and finish his journey at any village. Okay? So, it'd be better if we started at F and finished at D, because the total weight, if we add those, is 18, isn't it? Yeah? So we get rid, so we put these ones back in. 9 and 9, so these are now um, even. Well, that comes to 6, doesn't it? Okay, and then we're going to get rid of this one. Now, the optimal route that's still four. The optimal route now is going to start at F and finish at D. Okay, so it's going to be 164 plus 18 which is 182 miles. So that's it, and then it says state the vertices from which the politician could start in order to achieve this optimal route. Start at F and finish, um, finish at D. Uh, start or start at D and finish at F. Okay, nice and simple. Okay, so that was a total of 11 marks and I've managed to do it in roughly eight minutes. Okay, but it's understanding what's happening. Okay, so even though I finished it in that quick, I know a few of you just want me to go over part C again. I will. Okay, first of all, let's just double check. Everyone's happy with part A. Starting at A and returning at A means every node needs to be even because it needs to be Eulerian, okay? 
We then worked out the different pairings for it to be Eulerium. Perfect. Part B. If we're starting at A and finishing at C, so starting at one place and finishing at another, the only way this is possible is if you have one pair of odd notes. Okay? So, to start at A and finish at C, find the optimal root, that means A and C have to be odd. So, if A and C are odd, we have to keep in the F, E, and the E, D, okay? Because it's still the smallest is this one. So, if A and C have to be odd, forget about that. We're just going to keep this as 22 and add this on. So, that's how we got 186, okay? For part C, it then says a politician is to travel along the roads at least once. He can start his journey at any village and finish his journey at any village. So that means, again, if we're starting and finishing in two different places, we need exactly one pair of odd nodes, but we want the optimal time. So even though the previous one was a solution, if we double back, to, if we actually started at A and finished at C, that would mean they have to be odd, okay? Yeah, that's right, yeah? Oh, no, sorry, sorry. Yeah, if we start A and finish the C, they have to be odd, but that gives 18. Wait, have I done this the wrong way around? I've confused myself. Okay, everyone just stop for a second. Yeah, sorry, guys, no, I'm back on track, don't panic. Right, it's because this is the drawing for part C, isn't it? Yeah, so then for part C, what is the smallest root? Well, actually, if we start at D and F, when we redo our roots of A and C, we're only adding 18. So that means we're, we're shortening it by four miles. So this is why I chose D and F to start and finish at, so that the roots I'd have to, like, traverse twice. So traverse is, like, go back on ourselves. Okay, that is smaller. 18 is smaller than 22. Actually... Do you know what, everyone? The answer's wrong. Anybody know why my answer's wrong for part C? I was so fixated on using this minimum root. Actually, if I traversed A and F, that's the smallest, isn't it? That's why we have to double check everything. Right, guys, so. For part D, we did have 182 miles, but who said we then had to reuse this? We've just assumed this and just been happy, okay? We don't need to be happy. We need to find the optimal solution. Because actually, if I have this, the optimal solution, which one has the lowest traversity? 12. So really, A and F is 12. So I should traverse that one twice, okay? And I should start at C, because this will be now three, four, one, two, three, four, four. And I should start at C and finish at D. Start at C, finish at D, or start at D, finish at C, because that's only gonna give me 12. And 164, plus 12 is 176. Okay, this is another fantastic and valuable lesson. It's okay to make mistakes, and I know sometimes we get fix it, fixated on this. It's okay to make mistakes. It's being able to spot your mistakes and understanding why. So well done for those of you who spotted my complete intentional mistake. <laughs> no, it's fantastic. Okay, right, we have finished now all the teaching. We're now going to do lots of practice and problem solving, and that is what we're going to do. Okay, well done. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. <laughs>